Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper trading webinar. If you are here to learn about trading the futures markets using the Viper tools, you are absolutely in the right place. First, we've got to knock out our standard disclaimer. All communications for, from Viper trading systems are for educational purposes only. Futures and Forex trading does involve risk and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar or other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And of course, everybody here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. Alrighty, so tonight's topic is uh, mid-band boxes and uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, without further ado, let's get over to a uh, crude oil chart from today um, on screen one. So here's how I'd like to start off tonight's webinar, because we have some new faces, um, some people who are visiting, some people who are seeing this for the first time, and some new faces of people who have joined us, and welcome members, of course, some of you have been with us for a long time. And just do a quick sort of uh, foundational overview of what exactly you are looking at. Now, we here at Viper trade futures markets on an intraday basis. So we look to take advantage of um, short-term volatility or movement in these markets. And the markets we trade are crude oil, gold. We don't trade NASI in the room anymore. We trade uh, NQ and y, or, uh, YM, Mini Dow, and um, the Russell, RTY. Uh, tonight we're going to focus on crude and gold. Now what I want to suggest for everybody to do, what you're looking at here is a four range chart. So we're connected to a data feed and um, that data feed provides data for each of the instruments and it renders on a four range chart. That's what you're seeing right here. Now if you just had a plain chart with nothing on it, it would just be a bunch of random bars sort of going up and down and you wouldn't really kind of have a good feeling on what to trade. Um, so what you're seeing here is that is the Viper indicators. So we have background colors, red, green, and this sort of opaque color here. We have bar colors, blue, yellow, and red. We have um, the bands, we have swings, we have predictors. You can toggle those on and off as you wish. They paint in real time showing support and resistance areas. And the most prominent thing on the on the chart is probably the bands. So you get the you get the middle band here, which is called the mid band. Uh, right in here. It's the thick band in the middle, and then you have four bands above it and four bands below it. Now you have to know that markets do one of three things. They're going to be either going up they're going to be going down or they're going to be going sideways. And the most important thing to do before you start thinking about taking any trades is trying to determine what direction the market is in. Is it up, is it down, or is it sideways? Here are some examples of, of crude oil. Uh, here's a good example of it going up. I think this is the other day. This might have been yesterday. So here we had a, a, a small patch where the market broke down. And I'm going to keep this pretty high level, and then we'll get into the actual trades themselves, okay? Here we broke down to a support level, came up, kissed the mid-band, rolled over. This was actually a short trade here, right? Broke down double bottom, stopped out, and then the market started to head up. Now, generally speaking, when a market is heading up, you're going to be looking at... Um, green backgrounds, predominantly blue bars, and then notice how the mid band and all the bands in an uptrend stair step up like this. See how they're stair stepping up and stair stepping up, stair stepping up. You get the idea. So this is said to be an uptrend. So then the question becomes how do we trade an uptrend? So that's a question. How do we trade an uptrend? Does anybody know? Are we buying in an uptrend? Are we selling in an uptrend? Are we scalping in an uptrend? What types of trades do we take when the market is heading up? 
Anybody have any idea? What kinds of trades do we take when the market is heading up? Oh, excuse me. Let me take a little sip of tea here. Wake up a little bit. My apologies. Right. We're buying. We're buying off of pullbacks. Exactly. So when we have an uptrend, the you have to know sort of a little bit of terminology here. And so the terminology that, that really makes a trend a trend is what we call thrust. In the case of an uptrend, that's up. How do we know we're thrusting in an uptrend? Well, you can tell that the bars are heading up, bars are blue, and they're generally going to stay above the mid-band and above stealth and above line six, which is right here. This is the thrust part of the move. Let me blow this up so we, we get a little more clear about it. All right. Now, the retracement part of the move is this pullback right here. Now, the ideal condition that we like the most, and most I think most of you would agree, um, is when the bars sort of kiss or wick the mid-band, as they did right here, and it gives us a chance to form a little box. Now, I'm not going to show the, the object trader tool. Gary has whole, uh, you know, webinar is devoted to, to the use of that tool. But one of the main things that we do is we use what's called a region box. So we draw a little box that looks kind of like this. Our, the ideal condition is it sits right at or around the mid band. Here's another example over here. So here's here was the short box example we looked at a few minutes ago here, right there like that. Here's a long box right in here where it dips just a little bit below the mid-band. Here's another one over here. So these are all examples of mid-band boxes, right? Here's another one right here. We like the mid-band. The mid-band's our friend, and that's where we like to take trades, especially when we're trending. Now, you might say, so so how does the region box actually work? You might be, you might say, well, what, what, is, what, what is that? What happens is if you look, use a close outside of the box, once a, once a market closes outside of a region, in this case, when you're in an uptrend, you're enabling longs only. Right? Well, I'll get into the precision about the box itself being, what I'm doing here is kind of a, um, you know, 20,000 foot view, <laughs> if you will. I'm just trying to conceptually get everybody to wrap their head around how this box thing works and what it is. We'll get into the precision of drawing it in, in just, just a few minutes here. Okay, so when the bar closes, we're long in this example here. And then we, we there's two ways to trade it. If you put two contracts on, what we like to do is you here in the room, go ahead and take your scalpy off. What does that actually mean? take your scalp off what are we talking about well you're going to notice here that the distance between the mid band and usually some kind of established swing level is going to be depending on the instrument between six and eight and ten ticks so in this case here you were filled long say at uh, 62 86 or 87 on the close there and then you came up and you hit this 03 so that's what uh, 86 16 ticks roughly 16 ticks to here. So one would say that you would be taking, if you tr traded two contracts, one contract would come off here and that's considered your scalp. Okay? Now, the origin, the, so let me just do a quick uh, anatomy of this trade here. You're filled long here. Close of that bar. Come up here and you have two contracts on. And your initial stop is usually 12 ticks below here, so that'd be 75. So your initial stop for two lot is sitting down here at 75 if you were filled at 87, right? That's right here, two lot. Now, since you've taken, if you use the object trader tool, it will it will handle all this for you. It will it will. Um, you know, it will it will hit. It'll manage the targets. It'll manage the stops, and you can even program to do the trail stops. So what we like to do then is when we peel one contract off, we'll take the second one up to two or three ticks behind the entry. Now, why do we do that? 
why do we want to why do we want to do a scalp and peel 10 ticks off on the first contract and then get this this thing up real close to where we got in why are we doing that what is this what is this for why don't we just why don't we just leave it down here what's the big rush to get it up into here what the heck was that what's that for lock in profits reduce your risk good uh, protection yeah and it's also now a free trade right a free trade you've heard was we say that all the time who said free trade Roger there you go yeah so what that means is that no matter what happens on this trade let's say that some terrible news event comes out and for some reason it flips and just tanks and this crude just flips out well we're okay we're protected because we got our 10 ticks here right we get we comes down and takes two or three ticks away from us so net net we still make a net of seven eight ticks no matter what happens this is our goal on almost every trade. We want to do this if we can, when markets are trending. Now, depending on how tight or loose you trailed the stop, can you see here that the market broke the line six, the thinner line, and stealth more or less right in here? So you trail stop, trail stop. This is a small example because it only went up like another, you know, went to 20 ticks. So you maybe got 20 ticks on the second contract. And you stopped out here at 86-ish, or 06-ish. So you're filled at 86, 87. You get out at 06, 07 on the second lot. So how much money did this trade make? You got 10 off here. Could have actually got a little more than 10, but let's just round it off and say 10. And you got 20 on here. 30 ticks total on this example of a long trade. And how much is crude oil per tick? Anybody know? How much money did this one long trade make? Yeah, depending on your actual fills, about $300 less commission. Good. So um, let's have a talk about, about uh, I'm going to intercede for a second here, and I'm going to put something important up that we all have to know, especially if you're new to, to trading futures, is it's important to have a goal. Uh, I've been having problems with my... I'm going to have to replace my wireless keyboard here. Let's see if I can type something in here. We must have a goal for each day. Oh, you're going to be a little dog tonight, aren't you? i got to go get one of these tomorrow. Nice. Oh, you're going to be a little thing, aren't you? Let me just verbally tell it to you. So what we want to do is this, and I, I wanted to type this in because it's that important. A lot of traders think, well, you know, the markets are moving around all day, and I see these big 200 tick moves, and I want to just, I want to clean up, you know, I want to make as much as I can every day. And that's not really how you do it. You want to make the most amount of money in the least amount of time. You, because every time you take a trade, you're exposed to market risk, meaning that the market can go for you, and you hit profit, profit targets, and you make money, or what else can happen? You can have losses, right? So the longer you're in the market, the more you are exposed to risk. So we want to take as little trades as we can and make the most amount of money. Now, what am, what am, where am I going with that? Well, if the, you made $300 here and your goal for the day was to make, say, 250 well, then you're done. This is called a one-and-done trade. The market went up. It moved in your favor. You're done. Now, if your goal is to make five or six hundred, you could surely take another trade. Yeah, you would stop trading. You would stop trading. That's called one and done. That's the ideal condition. We want to pick trades that are the ideal condition, manage them as best that we can so we have a high win rate, right? And we want to manage our losses. Now, let's look at another example of a trade. How about this trade right here where it comes below the mid band and the bars turn red? Show of hands, how many people like these trades? Yes or no? Do you like these types of trades where it goes deeper than the mid band and then sits down in here and the bars turn red? Quick show of hands. Do you like these types of trades? This is a different trade entry than these boxes at the mid band, isn't it? At the mid band, you notice the bars just turn yellow and they kind of sit here, right? 
They just kind of sit there. They just kind of sit there. They just kind of sit there. Life is good. You're happy. How about down here? We Sometimes these are referred to as a phantom trade. You might in the room hear something like, oh, that might be a phantom trade setting up. A phantom simply means that um, uh, the retracement of this move here goes deeper than the mid band and can go as far as the outermost band. So if you hear something along the lines of that's a deep retracement, that's a red bar retracement, that's, we had all kinds of names for it over the years, phantom trade where it comes close to the outside. Now, truth be told, looking at your responses here, Michael P., I don't like them. John says, I hate them. John, uh, Roy says, I don't like them. Uh, I, Tim Bryan says, I'm starting to get used to them. I take the first one. Uh, Lewis says, I focus mainly on the mid-band trades. Mindy says, uh, I don't like when the PM1 turns red. It makes me nervous. I'm afraid of catching a falling knife. Okay, good. Yeah, good. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. There's lots of types of different trades to take, yes? There's mid-band trades. There's deep phantom type retracement trades. There's all sorts of different trades to take. If you don't like that trade, I would suggest that you try to practice this trade and get good at it. If you don't like it and you just can't win doing it, then what do you do? If you come to the team, you come to me and you say, you know, Charles, I'll tell you what, I see that that's a trade. Maybe it was called in the room, it probably was. And, you know, whatever for re whatever psychological reason, when those bars are red and it's below the mid-band, I just can't seem to win at taking those trades. They're just, I, they're just losers for me. Well, then the question is, should you keep taking that type of trade? What do you think? If you just practice at it and sim and you just, just can't get it and you just can't get it, should you take this type of trade? No. Right. Don't take the trade. That's right. Exactly. Good. Yes, that's what we're trying to say here. It's, it's incumbent upon us as teachers and software developers to show these different types of trades because there's people all over the world trading different instruments that take those trades. So we have to teach it. But that doesn't mean you have to take it. So that's what I mean in the room. Like, for instance, let's suppose that you hear, well, that's a phantom trade coming up on oil, and you clearly see it's sitting down here, but it's under the mid-band, and the bars are red, and you're nervous, and you just never your, – your win rate is very low on these. Well, then you wait for another one. Look here. Look here. A few minutes later, another one comes along. Here's a nice, beautiful, juicy yellow bar mid-band box. Here's another one here. It turned into a beautiful trade popped up, you got your scalp off, pulled up your trail stop to two ticks behind the entry, it never came back to your entry here, and then you ran up here. This trade was probably 400 bucks. So here you had a nice trade, here you had a phantom trade that worked out, here you had another nice trade, and then here you had another nice trade to make money. One, two, three, four, arguably down here, you could have gone in down here at a box, maybe that was five. Five winter chicken dinners, six right here. And, and all of them but one were at the mid-band. Yeah, I don't know, Eddie. Uh, you know, I, 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 Eddie keeps pushing to look at YM trades. I'm going to hold off at looking at YM and, and for this reason. I've noticed that the volatility, there's, the big boys have turned the scripts on, the algos on to YM. That's the mini Dow. It's $5 a tick. And, you know, I just... It just moves so fast, and unless you're really quick on the trigger and you know what you're doing, YM can eat your lunch. I mean, if you nail a good trade, you can get an 80 tick pop, but you might have to take a couple of hits to do it. So I'm going to hold off showing YM. All right, that being said, let's do this. Let's advance. Um, uh, uh, okay, let's, let's bring now armed with this knowledge that we have. Let's fast forward to today. Now, here is how I'd like to show uh, crude oil from today. And, and uh, yeah, well, that's that's an issue. Is and I, and I have to say this too, and I really wish I could type this in. I'm going to get myself a new wireless keyboard tomorrow. I don't know what's going on with this thing. Um, let me orient you here so you know what you're looking at. Midnight Pacific time is right here coming into this morning. 
Can everybody see this? Now, in the first five and a half hours, what was the trend direction on oil? Right in here. With my, I'm circling my cursor from here, from midnight till about, I don't know, cl close to 6 a.m. Pacific. What was the trend in here? What was the trend? Down. Down. So in downtrends, we short the market. That's right, John S. Or it's said to sell resistance. So it's a similar it's a similar thing as the, as the long trades. So the long trades, we're buying support. Here's some more little boxes at the mid-band to look at. Here's one here, long trade. Yes, long trade. Another one here, long trade, mid-band, yellow bars, perfect, long. They all worked out. Now, what starts to happen here is that we can see that the market started to break down. In the case of here, we have a couple of thrusts that started to move in the down direction. Here's one. Now, the clue for this is as follows, and here's what you're going to hear in the room, and here's what um, I suggest that you try to train your eye to look for. Even before we had this red bar breakdown and a push down into here, what can you note about what was happening in here? What little clues were we getting? before we even got that little breakdown. Now, in the room, you're going to hear observations of, like, notice how we're getting a series of lower highs, right? You might hear a comment in the room like that. Notice how on crude we're getting a series of lower highs. Now, this was at midnight, so the room wasn't open. I'm just simply showing you an example. What is this starting to tell you? In other words, when you see this on any market, gold, it doesn't matter, it, the, any market, it just doesn't matter. When you can't take out those swings that are established here, it's kind of telling you what? The market is losing momentum to the upside. There is a likelihood, this is sort of a little breadcrumbs being dropped in front of you saying, hey, 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 hello, wake up, pay attention here. We might be changing trends. We can't keep going up anymore. The buying interest, the buy algos aren't running as uh, uh, the sell programs are looking to start kicking in. Yes? Now, when, it, when the market, when crude breaks this swing right here, um, through this thrust right here, the background turns red and we have more pretty good confirmation that the trend is now down. Now, there are what's called shallow retracements where a market will come up to break line two and the stealth line that don't quite get to the mid band that can be characterized as short trades. In this case right here, that would be right in here. Now, here again, I can, we can show these trades and we can explain them to you, but some people like the deep retracement. Remember the deep retracement where some of you said, I don't like that trade, I'm not good at it? This is the opposite of it. We don't come to the mid-band. We don't go above the mid-band in the case of the downtrend with the short, right? We, this is a sh what's called a shallow retracement. It only goes up and it breaks stealth and it breaks line two, comes up in here just shy of the mid-band, and then it rolls over. Now, a lot of people are nervous taking this because they're afraid of what might happen is that you're going to get a little head fake down like that. Maybe maybe you get a scalp, maybe you don't, and then all of a sudden, boom, whammy, woo, it comes back up in here in your face and stops you out. Now, if you get sucked into a trade that that happens, what can you do? In other words, let's suppose that you tomorrow morning you're trading and maybe it's live, maybe it's sim, and you take a shallow trade that goes a little bit in your favor and then starts coming against you. What do you do? What can you do to remedy that situation right there? What's the quickest way to remedy that? Just all for some reason, it starts just pulling against you. You know, it doesn't follow through. In, in, in my example I'm talking about here, it doesn't do this. It starts going this way. You hit the close button. Good. You get out. Don't let it go get your stops. You don't have to do that. A lot of people get into, and please, if this is you, and I know there's some of you in here, and it's perfectly okay because I used to do it too, what's called a hope trade. A hope trade is, you know, let's suppose you got filled short somewhere in here. 
you know, your stops or your initial stops are up in here somewhere and it starts pulling against you and pulling against you and you don't want to get out and you keep, and then the worst thing is I've seen this is they start taking, pushing your stops out of the way. You keep thinking it's going to roll and then it goes up higher and it never does. Next thing you know, you take something that could have been maybe like a hundred or $120 loss and it turns into a $300 loss. That's called a hope trade. If that, I'm describing you, any of you in here tonight, or any of you listening on this recording, please, 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 a million times, please do not move those stops, okay? Leave them where they are. And if you, you don't get that follow through and you feel like that trade's just not going to work out, you come right over here to Object Trader or whatever you have and you close, exit the position. Get out. Because here's the thing. Once you get into these hope trades, psychologically, it's, it's very bad. It's very damaging for you because you can take a big hit really badly, and you don't need to do that. And once you exit and you take a small pop, maybe it's only like 50 or 60 bucks, what you do is you reset yourself, right? You reset yourself, and you come back into the game. Well, in this case here, Brian, what you could – well, in this case, uh, it, didn't, it didn't do this, so – um, you know, if you if you didn't, you know, didn't do that, that was all hypothetical. But you know, we did actually get follow through, and this turned into be a pretty good trade. Um, but in, if you miss this, yeah, you have to wait for for this this retracement that's set up um, to a rollover right in here. Here was a clear mid band box roll short right in here, and then you had another one in here. Now we open the live trading room. Gary does. He opens the live trading room because he trades crude. Um, at 5:55 Pacific. Now, why do we open? Why at 5:55? Which would have been like right in here somewhere. At 0:41, is that a phantom trade, Paul? Let me go back here. Is this a phantom trade? Well, th that's that is the funny sort of odd. Uh, 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 well, these aren't phantom trades over here because the trend is down, so you're shorting resistance. These are legitimate short trades. Short trade here, short trade, short trade. I think if you're asking over here, is this bounce a phantom trade? In other words, are you still in an uptrend, and could you have taken that long and gotten up to the mid-band? Yes. Yes, that is correct. Um, and that's why, that's why I put the caveat earlier that some people – uh, are nervous taking these because sometimes in some cases as it was right here that after it came up and you took the long trade and you probably you might have got a scalp off here and then you tighten your stop so it stopped out like two remember you pop the 10 and then you come up with the two three ticks so you still you know maybe you netted about eight ticks here on that roll and then clearly you wouldn't be taking longs anymore here everybody sees that right background's red trend is down now you're shorting but yeah that could have been a legitimate phantom trade right here yes Okay, now, yeah, we open the uh, – Gary opens the room at 555 because um, uh, the crude oil pit opens at 6 o'clock and it starts trading crude, and we expect a lot of movement in crude right around 6. Now, here's what happened. Uh, we ha You had another short that didn't get back to the bottom. And then we came up here. And this would have been, let's see what time this would have been. This would have been about 6.20, 6.18, 6.20, 6.21. You had some bars pause right here, right where that previous box was located, right here. Now, this question comes up all the time, and it's totally a legitimate question. The question is this. When do I box in a trade using Object Trader Region Box? And do I go with a directional bias of long only or short only versus do I let the trade go either way, either way? So, for instance, in um, in the room, you might hear calls like, OK, I'm only going to go short there. OK, I'm only going to go long there. Or, OK, there's a region box at the mid band forming. Let it go either way. So why, when do we let region boxes go either way? Any idea? Is there a specific time or reason that we let them go either way? Close to the open or around news events. Good, Brian. Good. Good call. 
Yes. Yes. Generally speaking, in the first, in terms of crude oil, uh, gold, and the equities, if you're within an hour of the open and or if there is news event within 30 minutes, you can legitimately let the bar, you can let, you can take the trade either way. You can take the trade either way. So what I'm saying is this. What, is, what, what does that have to do with anything? Well, what I'm saying is that when you drew this third region box right here, that you could have let that go either way. In other words, at the time that this box formed, you were only at 6.18 in the morning, 6.16 in the morning, and you were only 15 minutes into the crude pit being open. And realistically, at the point when this formed, there was an equal equal likelihood that it could go back down and check this bottom. Yes, I think you would agree. And there was an equally li equal likelihood that it could start heading up. So I wasn't in the room when this was called. I'm fairly certain Gary put called a region box here. And if that was the case, then you were filled long on this bar right here. So that is the one, that's one of the few times. So if you have news events like crude oil inventory coming out, you have um, things like non-form payroll news coming out, you got J, uh, PMI coming out, news events, 7 a.m. Pacific time. Um, you're close to the crude pit open. You're within 30 to 60 minutes of the crude pit open. You can let markets go either way because a lot, many, many times what will happen is um, the trend can change. Now, in this case here, you did get a little bit of an ABC pattern. Sometimes they're more pronounced. Sometimes they aren't. You're filled long on the close of this bar here. Now, look what happens. You get a thrust. You get a pullback. And stealth and line six hold right here. It checks where it broke. And then off you go. Now, you might say, well, you know, I didn't get in. The, 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 I, I missed that box. Could, it, could I get in here? Is this, is this possible to get in here? Yes. That's a secondary entry. Now, sometimes, and I'll look for the examples of this, sometimes it'll do a shallow uh, retracement like this, and sometimes it'll go all the way back down here and start checking down in here, right where the top, like, of the region box was maybe, right in here. That's a legitimate no, secondary entry right in here, too. That's another, that's another good place to get in if you miss the original pop. Now, here's what I want to do. I'm gonna, now, armed with all this knowledge, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do, I'm going to advance this chart in real time. And everybody here, I want you to participate, okay? This is how you, this is how you learn. I, I try to make my webinars as interactive as possible. I'm going to advance this chart like we're, we're looking at this in real time together. And you're going to type in when you see another trade. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do a few of these. We're going to do a few of these together. This is a great exercise that everybody really likes um, because it, we're, we're looking at it in real time and it really trains your eye to see where that next trade setup is. Ready? I'm going to start at the point of the last trade. So don't type in a T where those boxes are, okay? I'm going to advance the chart, and we're going to look at it together. I'm going to, I'm going to skip ahead in the day. I'm going to go off to 8 o'clock. All right? I'm going to go off to – I'm going to get away from, from that other uh, chart there. I'm going to do I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you something. We're going actually we're going to skip ahead to 723. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all these notes off, and start fresh. Here we go. Yeah, remove all drawing objects. There we go. Okay, clean chart. Now you don't have to say what trade what what direction the trade is. You just when you think you see a trade setting up that you could take Type in the letter T. Ready? Here we go. All right. You're at 712. I'm going to advance the chart. Blow bars up a little bit more. Okay. 
We're coming up on 7 12 7 23 Blow the bars up just even a little bit more so you can see them real good. There's 724. We still have the room open. Seven twenty-five. Seven twenty-seven. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. Alright, this is probably the trickiest part of learning how to trade our system. We're, we're, you know, if you were to, uh, you know, sort of go right to the heart of the matter, um, this is it. Because we don't have a crystal ball. We can't look into the future and predict with any, you know, we can have a good idea of where we're going to take the trade and how we're going to take it. But, you know, the markets are going to do what the markets do. Now, that being said, some of you typed in a T here, and I think somebody said it was a phantom trade at 703. That's true. That is actually true. That uh, If you spotted that, that is correct. Um, because technically speaking, at that point, you were in an uptrend. You came to just shy of the outermost band. It held, and it popped at least a scalpy trade back to the mid band, just like that trade we saw a few minutes ago over here. Remember? Just like that same one we we saw over there, remember? So you're right. And could you make the case that this was a secondary phantom? That's true. That's true. Some of you typed in T's over here, and I understand that. Now, if you started to look at the other side where you were starting to see what? A series of what? Lower highs and lower lows, you might be thinking what? Trend change, and a lot of you typed in T's when these bars formed right here and you were probably thinking short and that was correct yes that was the trade now now that you see that some of you typed in T's down here this is too late okay I just have to tell you I'm not trying to insult you I'm not trying to be rude here but here's the thing you have to work on you have to do market replay and and do exercises on your charts so that when you see the retracements the retracements have to be somewhere that we call the sweet spot basically kind of like a strike zone think of it like a strike zone when you're playing baseball or softball right here's your knees which is the shallow retracements right here's the mid band right down the pike on the strike zone and this is your shoulders that's a good, healthy way to think. Envision a zone around the mid-band. Shallow retracement, mid-band retracement, deep retracement. All good trades. So what I'm trying to tell you is that if you're thinking to get in here, and, and, and I know why you're doing that. I know why you're saying that. I know why you didn't type in a T until here. It's because you have to see more bars to be convinced that it's going down. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. Sometimes you'll get lucky, and when you get in here, You'll get follow through, and there will be a, a good trade there that will actually follow through. In some cases, it'll hit the swing, come back up here, stop you out, and then roll over and go down. You see that, Lewis? I see your questions. I, I, I'm going to circle back on those. I'm kind of staying on topic here for just a few minutes. Okay? All right, cool. So if you're if you're seeing to get in here and it's too late, you have to work on the skills of seeing the the, the mid band trade when the tracement comes here. Okay? All right, let's do another one together, and I'm going to help you out. This is going to be a short entry. I'm going to advance the chart in real time, and when you think there's a trade that you would take short on oil, you type in a T. All right, here we go. Advancing the chart. Okay, now you're at 7.27. Seven thirty. The room is still open. All right, I'm going to stop it right there. Now that you see this and you see the bars that happened. 
Everybody can see where the trade was, yes? Does everybody see it now? If you didn't see it before, do you see it now? Yes? Some of you typed in T's when these two bars formed right here. Yes. Some of you typed in T's when these bars formed right here. This could have been one continuous box if you didn't draw it, or you could have had a second box right there. In the case of the first box, you would have been filled short on the close of this bar right here. In the case of the second box with these bars, you would have been filled short in here. Both good entries. Both good, good entries short. You have to realize that we talk when these bars form in real time right around the mid-band, these are your trade opportunities. You're looking at them right here. This is it. This is the meat, the heart of the matter. If you can master finding and seeing these entries and nailing these entries with some consistency and precision, this is the key to making money trading futures. This is it. This is the meat and potatoes right here. I'm showing you the meat and potatoes. You can have the salad. You can have some mac and cheese on the side. Maybe you want to order some dessert. But the heart of the matter is right here with these boxes right here. If you want to be successful, you have to train yourself to see this very quickly and efficiently and take those trades. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do, and then we'll, I want to go over to gold. By the way, do you want to see what that trade turned out to, to be? In fact, I think we called this in the room, this 77. You want to see what that trade turned out to do? Here, I'll show you. I remember calling 77 in the room. I think Gary did too. I remember this number. See how it came up and kissed 77 right on the button within a tick of the mid band? We actually called this room in the room live. In fact, I recall calling it when the market was down here. Anybody remember that? I said, if that thing comes, if oil comes anywhere back up near the mid band around 78 ish, I'm going to short a rollover. Anybody remember that? All right, we'll come, we'll come to that. We'll come to that, Brian. I mean, uh, who was asking? Bing. I'll show you. We'll show you the box. But I think the bigger question is, are you seeing where to take it? Before you can even draw a box, are you seeing where you take it? Let me answer that question first. Yes. Okay, good. All right. That's the most important thing, seeing where to take it. Yeah. Now, let me show you what this trade turned into be. Now, clearly, you can see that you got a, you got a scalp trade off here. More than 10 ticks would have taken one lot off if you trade two. And then you trail your stop down, trail your stop down trail your stop down and where this thing stop out right here all right let's do some quick math let's do some quick math you're filled short at 69 let's use a round number let's say 70 70 ish your 10 tucks come up come off at 60 so that would have been right here okay right in here you got your scalp off okay and then you get out of the trade all the way down here for your runner. Down here, I don't know, let's use a round number. Let's say 25-ish. So what is what is 70 to 25? Is that 35 ticks? 35 ticks on the runner, and you got 10 ticks on the scalpy. So that's 45 ticks. Total amount on this trade, less commission, is $450, depending on your entries. I'd say between four and $500, four or $450 ish. What I'm trying to say is this. You could have missed all this movement. You could have missed the long trade. You could have missed these pullbacks. You could have missed this rollover. You could have missed this drop. And the only thing, you came in and in the room and you were watching this and you saw this mid-band box set up and you took the short, this one short, you could, and you had a $500 goal, you would have come very close to hitting it just on this trade, one trade alone. So that's what I mean about finding an instrument that you get comfortable with. It doesn't matter what it is. If you like the Russell, trade the Russell. If you like that price action, if you're good at seeing the movement, seeing the trade entries. If you're good at oil, stick with oil. Find the type of trades setups that you really like and only take those when you get them. I mean, it might be in the case of a more in the, in the case of a morning, you might only take one or two trades, three tops, and you can pretty easily hit your goal. 
All right, we're going to do one more trade on crude, and you're going to call it out when you see it, and then I'm going to get into more detail about how to draw the box. Okay? Here we go. Ready? I'm going to clean the chart off so you're not confused at looking at old notes. Remove all drawing objects. Clean chart. Okay, here we go. Now this would have been, uh, I think the room would have been closed, so you would have had to take this one on your own, okay? Which is okay. I mean, we have a lot of traders all over the world that are with us for a long time, and they just use our software to take trades. And sometimes they come in a room and sometimes they don't. They trade all, all manner of day and night. These these setups you're looking at work work all the time on different instruments. It doesn't matter what time it is. Okay, so, all right, now get ready. No, don't call a T yet. I haven't even started yet. <laughs> there is no, don't go call a trade. There is not a trade here. And here's well here I'll come back in circle and explain why that's not a trade right there. All right. Let me blow up the bars real real quick here. Okay, now you're at 8.27 in the morning. Okay, let me advance it a little bit more. Coming up on 8.28 Pacific. Now you're at 8.30. All right, I'm going to stop it right there. So let me circle back on this, okay? I, 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 this really needs to be addressed in the, in the most appropriate way. First of all, when I, when I started showing you this chart, it was already over here, okay? So we weren't looking at trades over here. We weren't, this was all done as far as moving forward on our little um, exercise here. Now, some of you might argue, try to make the case that this was a phantom trade out here. I would, I would disagree with you. And here's why. Let me contrast this price action with other price action that I would consider to be real phantom trades. Can you see how we blast out through past the furthest most band? The background turns green, the bars are blue, and all the mid bands in the mid band stair step up. This is clearly a trend change from down to up. Uh, you know, can, could you short this and could you have wrote it back down to the mid band? Well, yes, you could have. Um, I, it's not something personally I would do. I want to I show you the difference of that versus um, cases where, remember we talked over here and somebody, a couple of you said, well, isn't this, isn't this phantom trades out here? And the answer was yes. Can you see that, that we had not broken the outermost band that, that respected the swing right here? The background was still somewhat opaque, which means transitional. Can you see that? So what happens here is this, is, is when, when, when you're coming off a, a, a large uh, uptrend as you were over here, and you're still in this sort of limbo zone right here, where you're between the outermost band and the mid band, and you're still trying to get long in here, that is okay. You can do that. But it has to respect the support level. It has to respect this. Once that is broken, as it did right here, which we looked at earlier, remember? Just a few minutes ago, remember? Now you're not, you, you're no, you shouldn't be getting long again in here. This is now legitimate short trades. We're shorting retracements. And then the short, we showed the short trade here, right? Everybody see? Now come over here. Let's contrast this look with this look over here. Now, if the market had come up just shy of the mid or the outermost band and here rolled over and came back to the mid band, I would agree with you. Yes, that could be a um, legitimate um, uh, phantom trade short still. 
in the transitional background, but it didn't do that. It went well beyond it, just like this thrust did to the downside right here. See it? See the difference we're talking about, everybody, and here? This short push to go to into a downtrend is similar to the push you have here to the upside. Everybody see that? Everybody see that? I want that to be clear. This is really important. It's subtle. It's a very subtle but important difference of what I'm showing here of where a trend is changing on where it isn't. Here, clearly, you've tra changed trend to the upside. Now. Let's look at the trade setup in detail, including the construction of the box. Some of you typed in a T when these bars formed right here, and the box would have looked like this. When you draw the box, you must take the candle. So what we have is we have a pattern here, okay? Can you see? I want to. It's, it's very here again. It's very subtle, but it's important to train your eye to see this. Notice how when a market retraces, it does a series of bars like this. See, it comes down. I'm not going to zigzag them all. You get the idea. Here, back up. Here, up a little bit. Here, up. Now, you want to take, when you wick the mid-band here, you take this bar. This is a little bit bigger uh, case right here. And you engulf the bars. You have one, two, three, four bars. B boxes can be as little as two bars. They can be as much as three or four bars, and they can be much larger and go out for some period of time, like five, six, seven bars or more. But it's important that you engulf the swings right here. You see how these bars are forming? When you're, when you're getting long, the location of the top of the bar uh, box is critical because that is the close above this is going to be what gets you long. Everybody see this? The bottom of the box doesn't really matter so much because you're not getting short. Now, having said that, if you let the box go both ways, if this wasn't an uptrend and you're, say, right at the crude pit open or around news, then the bottom of the box is critical because now you're looking to both get short or long. But in the case of the long, you want to engulf the candles as such. It forms a little box like that. Now, if you drew the box like this, did you ever get filled long? If you drew that box, just as I have it right there, did you get filled long on that box, yes or no? No. Because it never closed above the top of the box. This is what gets you in, like this. It has to do that and close. That, If that happened, yes, you would be long. Yes, but it didn't. Now, this happens a lot. And you're going to have to get used to this, okay? As you learn the system, this happens a lot. What will happen is it will keep going down a little bit more. Now, when it does this right here, you want to redraw your box. Or on the fly, you can draw the box down here now. Can you see how the box moved? Now, if you look at the, the this retracement, remember what I was talking about earlier just a few seconds ago. I'll do this. You have this, you have this, you have this, and then you have that. Now, you had, keeping with that thought, A, B, C, D, E retracement approach, you have this, and then you had that. So in the case of these bars right here, this was just a continuation of the retracement down. So we never broke up. And then you get this. So it's trying to find a bottom. It's trying to find a place where buyers will return. If there is another tool, just a lot of traders like, it's called the line or the ray tool. And the way that works is you take a line or a ray and you draw it over the tops of the bars like that. And then when that is broken, you get long. In the case of the line or the ray or the region box, if you drawn it just like I show you, drag it down just under the midband here. One, two, three doji candles down. I can't, excuse me, fourth candle, fifth candle, excuse me. You are filled long on the close of that bar right there. So if you said trade in here, you were correct. Because this is a legitimate box, but you never got filled. 
If you typed in a T here, you were absolutely correct. Or you saw the T here and then and then said, okay, now there's a trade. Yes, that was correct too. Good. All right, did that help? I hope that helped. Getting a little long in the tooth here. I'm going to get ready to wrap. Is there any final questions? Everybody see that? I hope that helped. I mean, you know, we, I try to... We try to show as much as we can in as much detail. Look at that. It turned out to be a beautiful trade. Look at that long trade. Probably made another 300 bucks on that trade easily. Never moved against you once you got filled. You rode the runner up to here. You know, you're not going to – look, here's the thing. You're not going to learn all this in one webinar. I, I just have to tell you something. I, I know as much as you want to try to – it, you, some of you might feel a little anxious, like, hey, you know, uh, Charles, I want to pick this up as soon as possible. I want to start trading. I'm going to start loading the boat tomorrow, making some money, trading crude, gold, blue. blue, blue. I wanna... it, 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 it's going to take time. You're going to have to see scores of boxes over and over, this is different sizes, different shapes, different locations, different instruments. Before you get the hang of this, it's going to take some time. You have to be patient with yourself. You have to be patient with yourself. That's the only way to work through this. All right, I'm going to stop the recorder.